Wales and South Africa, 23 points to 18. Just the one try in this game. It was a proper arm wrestle of a game in the wet. We'll go through some of the key events, some of the stats, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one went. It certainly wasn't the blowout that a lot of people were calling for. I was of the mind that this one was going to be close, but I said that last week as well when the All Blacks played Wales. So... Um, just like anything, uh, sometimes you get it right, sometimes you get it wrong. Um, but yeah, the weather probably kept the score maybe a bit lower. Both sides opting for a fair few kicks. We saw many and up and under from the likes of Bigger and Pollard and a lot of box kicks from the uh, the halfbacks. But um, yeah, I just thought edge of your seat stuff, a little bit of controversy, a bloody pitch invader and... Um, yeah, a pretty good way to start my day. I've watched this one first. I haven't seen the All Blacks, Ireland and Japan, uh, England and Tyra. I haven't seen those games yet. They were on in the middle of the night here in NZ. So this is the first game of the day. And um, yeah, like I said, not a bad way to start it. Um, kind of tentative, to be fair. At start, it was um, both sides feeling each other out, which is maybe to be expected. Um, remember, the Springboks have had a few weeks off. And uh, Wales have had a few guys come back into camp after last week's game. A um, few breakdown penalties. Penalty count was pretty high in this game. Paul Williams was pretty busy on the whistle. Sometimes a little bit inconsistent. I thought sometimes he would give penalties for... Like towards the end of the game, Wales got penalised for one guy not rolling away. But then later on, he was kind of happy to say, don't hold him in. You know what I mean? It's one of those ones where it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. All you want is a bit of consistency. But, um, you know, tough job. Tough job being a ref. Um, to be fair, Lewis Rezamit went bloody close early, and Wales didn't. Neither side had a heck of a lot of chances where they actually looked like they was going to score. Uh, Rezamit was powering for the line down the right wing after a big old Nick Tompkins cutout pass, but uh, he stepped Mapimpi. But man, Khaleesi, who was everywhere, and um, your man Herschel Yankees, I think it was, managed to kind of get across and cover, put him into touch. Like you've seen Rezamit score many a try from that kind of range. So, um, yeah, good scramble, D, I thought. Good from Wales to generate the opportunity, but equally good for the Springbok defense. And sometimes, I know when you look at a game that's only got one try, oh, that was boring. Sometimes you just got to revel in the fact that, man, you just saw some brilliant defense. That can be its own kind of beauty, right? Um, yeah, back and forth, penalties. Um, Wales kick one, then conceded one from the restart, so three points apiece. Um, Willems, I had to go off, which was pretty unfortunate because he finally gets a crack. LaRue's finally the water boy for a week. And um, Willems gets injured, so unfortunate for him. So they kind of less chance to build that experience because Franz Stein ends up playing fullback. Gets man of the match, so quite a guy to bring on. But um, yeah, in terms of that depth building, uh, maybe not quite what the Springboks coaching staff were after. Wales kick another penalty, so it's 6-3. Then the Springboks answer, so 6-6. Six, six. Um, yeah, penalty count after 20 minutes is 3-4 to four, with the Springboks having one more. It's a lot of penalties to, to be going through, as I mentioned. Like, the count is high early, and uh, it continues to be high throughout the whole game. Um, you got to give some big credit to the Welsh defence as well. I've um, been bigging up the old uh, Springboks for, for defending Reece Zambit, but man, like the Welsh line held under relentless pressure from the, the Springboks countless times. Uh, Ellis Jenkins was massive in defence, won a couple of big turnovers in this game, including one on about 23 uh, minutes. And then, interestingly, not long later, Herschel Yankees kicks a uh, box kick out on the full, and that puts the, uh, the Welsh down the spring box end, and then they end up getting a penalty. So it's like Welsh defence, relentless, wins a turnover, and then only like two, three minutes later, they're the ones kicking the penalty to, uh, to go back in front. So it's kind of like motivational stuff for you guys, like good, uh, good reward for that hard defence. So, yeah, it was good stuff from Wales. Uh, Ox and Che got yellow carded in what was a bit of a weird, it was a bit of a weird moment, right? Because both sides from memory have been warned for the excessive penalties, which is fair because there has been a lot of penalties. The ref wants to check a high tackle uh, on from Ox on, um, on Nick Tompkins. But the pass that Nick Tompkins ends up receiving is around like his head, shoulders. And he's catching the ball up high. So when Ox hits him high, Ox is only hitting his arm, which is cool. No foul play, right? 
uh, and the ball ends up getting pushed into Nick Tompkins throat which is why he kind of recoils like he's been hit in the throat so there's actually nothing there's nothing doing but they look long enough they find a, they find something right it was one of those ones where it's like well we've stopped the game for three minutes to look at this high tackle we better find something uh, so they find one for Ox changing his line um, to put in a bit of a block so they yellow card him anyway uh, sometimes you love the TMO for stopping howlers sometimes I don't know man interrupts the game but anyway um wales kicked the resulting penalty from that yellow card and it's 12 points to six but interestingly wales get a yellow card of their own only a few minutes later um it's another prop it's uh reese carey goes to the bin for coming in at the side so it's 14 on on uh 14 with a couple of props in the bin at least he's consistent because he has worn both sides uh, not to infringe, so there you go. Um, the Welsh defence is massive again. Uh, Jenkins, this time with the... Uh, he picks Hershey Yankee's pocket with a nice intercept to get them out of trouble. He was probably man of the match in the first half, uh, Ellis Jenkins. And uh, Adams had a pretty nice touch finder with no angle to work with. So, um, yeah, uh, Wales go into the, uh, the sheds with a lead. Possessions 50-50. Uh, territory is 52-48, so it's very tight in that first half. Penalties considered a 7-9. to nine. Both sides tackling percentages in the 90s, but Wales have had to make uh, a few more. 52-30. to 30. Clean breaks is one apiece, so it's largely a story of defensive effort, um, of some high kicks. But again, it's wet, so it's kind of wet weather rugby, man. Uh, second half, there's, um, there's no points during the yellow cards, because I think Ox is on pretty much from the start of the second, and then uh, Elias not Elias, uh, Carey comes on, um, you know, after a few minutes, once his card's expired. Um, Wales defence, again, it goes through like 13 phases uh, early on in the second half, and who is it that, that gets the turnover? It's Jenkins again. He is a, uh, a proper, a proper, um, I don't know, saver of the team. What do you call him? Uh, yeah. As I said, man of the match the first If you were picking a man of the match from Wales, it would have been Jenkins, I reckon. Uh, and then Wales get a, a penalty not long later. So it's 15 points to nine. You start to wonder, man, Wales are able to take the scoreboard over pretty nicely. They could go on and do this, but Franz Stein isn't done. He kicks a mega penalty from, um, from inside his own half to get the spring box back within touching distance. 15 points to 12. And then the box scrum absolutely starts to get on top it's looked it's looked really good um in the game thus far and it just starts looking better doesn't it um they can see welsh can see scrum penalties whether it was pre or post bomb squad so yeah it was a, a tough night at the office for the welsh at scrum time i think they conceded at least four scrum penalties um weirdly and i mentioned there were kind of few really attacking chances in this game especially with the backs wales have finally got in the second half a nice move going. They're spreading it wide to the left wing. And some idiot runs onto the pitch. I don't know that he disrupts the move. But they have to stop the game. I think there might have been a knock on anyway. But what on earth, man? Uh, it's the weirdest thing. Wales had advantage anyway. So they go back for the penalty. Uh, Wales knock it over. So it's 18 points to 15. But it is just weird. Like... At least the guy Javo last week had the sense not to interrupt the game. So yeah, um, yeah, eighteen points to fifteen. Wales are in front. Can they hold on? Well, Mapimpi gets a try, but it gets disallowed, and it's a weird looking try as well, um, because Eben looks like he's offside. Eben gets the ball from a, a, a box kick, a Corbus Ronak box kick, a box kick, and it looks like he's way too far in front. And it's a weird one because the box kick didn't go far at all and uh, Eben needed to retreat, so they um, he didn't. So they uh, they rightly, I think, chalked that one off. Um, it looked wrong as soon as you saw it. It's like, how is Eben there? That, that shouldn't be right. And uh, in, in fact, it, uh, it wasn't right. So um, yeah, that one was, was chalked off. But a few minutes later, South Africa finally got it done through their mall. Malcolm Marks gets it. The mall, like, once you see, like, Wynn Jones and some of the other Welsh forwards having to scramble back to try and come back round, like, you know it's over. South Africa has been mauling all day, and Wales' mall defence has so far been pretty solid. 
but eventually it cracked. So they missed the key conversion, so it's only 20 points to 18. Uh, Elton's come on by that point. He missed the conversion, which was unfortunate because that still leaves it within touching distance. Um, and South Africa on like 77 minutes have a chance to potentially kick a penalty to put it beyond it, but they go for touch and ended up not scoring. So Wales had a chance, like just outside their own 22, to potentially go length of the field and either get a penalty or a... A try but to be honest this was not the game where it was looking like anybody was going to go length of the field to do anything so yeah sure enough Wales end up conceding a penalty uh South Africa knock it over at the death so it finishes 23 points to 18 like I say they're not looking like going length of the field right uh, Wales total run meters in this game is 136 136 which is low uh, South Africa's 281, which is also low, but 136 is exceptionally low. Um, yeah, Wales didn't have much ball in that second half. Uh, possession over the game, 58-42, but second half, 65-35 to the box. Territory finishes 60-40, but second half is 71-29 to the box. So, uh, yeah, I think over the course of the game, they were able to kind of exert a bit more pressure. They maul it 12 times to Wales's two. So eventually that kind of pressure of having to make your tackles, having to defend those malls is going to pay. And sure enough, that is the case. Um, as I mentioned multiple times, the weather was kind of conducive to mall and rugby as well. Clean breaks is two to three, so that it wasn't the game for that. Uh, interestingly, the lineouts were actually both surprisingly efficient given the conditions. Wales 14 from 15, South Africa 12 from 12. But as I mentioned, the penalty count was pretty high. Uh, 15 to Wales, 14 to the box. So when you're almost at 30 penalties in a game, yeah, you know it's... um Because, I mean, rugby's an 80-minute game. How much is ball in play? Not that much. And uh, when you've got 30 penalties, 29, uh, it means, yeah, it's just more kind of interruptions. To be fair, there wasn't a lot of TMO, although there, there was that one very lengthy TMO for the Ox. Uh, yellow card, but overall kind of low involvements. Tackling percentages, 89 for Wales, 90 for the box. Wales make 134 tackles. The box just over 100. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned, France then gets man of the match. Uh, he seemed pretty chuffed to get the win. So did Sia at the death. Um, 50 run meters for him and four defenders beaten is by far the um, the biggest ball carrier of the game. Uh, Lewis Rees with 24 was, was Wales' top run meter guy. So it just wasn't that kind of day. Thomas Francis, though, 15 from 15 tackles. He won't be happy with the three penalties he conceded. Lutiaka, 14 from 15 tackles for him. So, yeah, some proper shifts. Kicks from hand, 28-32. It's not actually super high. It's high. But, um, again, the ball and play time wasn't always that high. So we kind of end up with fewer kicks. Someone's banging outside my street. Don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm going to sit down and watch... Argentina and France now and then catch up on Italy and New Zealand and then Wales I just watched Wales Japan and um, Ireland and then England and Tonga so I've got quite the day ahead of me hope you guys are all well you guys in South Africa and Europe are probably not too far away from well you're probably going to watch one more game and then go to bed but um, yeah hope you guys will take care of yourselves let me know your thoughts on the game I think Wales have got Fiji next and South Africa have got Scotland so it should be pretty interesting games next week but uh, yeah you guys take care of yourselves and i'll talk to you again soon see you later